is sport is attractive to many of the general public, not to some intellectuals, is that it's filled with reversals. What you think may happen doesn't happen. Uh, a champion is beaten. The target of the four minute mile then came into view. It was talked about in the 30s and the Swedes got very close. Uh, but it had just taken us after the war to gradually come down to a time closer. It had conspired to become a possible barrier, physical or psychological. Uh, it wasn't, in my view, physical, but it did become, to some extent, psychological. And it was really um, uh, an example, I don't know whether the word paradigm is, is correct, a paradigm of human achievement uh, in a purely athletic sense. What limits are there to what the body could do? Well, most people, ladies and gentlemen, when something happens to them, what they do is they begin to believe that that's the way it is. That's the way it's always been. And they can't see the possibility of it being any different. Example, before April 1954, the common belief, the universal belief, because it had been tried again and again and again and people had failed, the belief was that man was not physically capable of breaking the four minute barrier, that he could not run a mile in less than four minutes. That was the belief on the planet. It had never been done. I knew I was very close, but you get very tired and there's a certain amount of pain and you slow up. You think you're going faster, but your legs are so tired that you are in fact slowing. Um, I did collapse at the end. Here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along, and he broke the four-minute barrier. Now, here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. What changed? 20,000 people, what changed? Here's what happened when they got on the track. They knew it had been done. And because they knew it had been done, there was a new belief about this barrier, about this goal that was unreachable. And those 20,000 people got in the race believing, knowing in their heart that someone had done it, that it's possible that they could do it. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, denied saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it. What's up, guys? Pleased to be here today. It's been an amazing roller coaster just all the way up, and just things have been going great uh, over the past many months. Uh, both inside of my regular business, which is fundinggym.com, uh, and also inside of, of course, the Hex community, which uh, part of that community is being represented today. Hopefully, you're going to learn something from someone uh, you know that has been a core supporter, a, a community member uh, inside of Hex, which is a type of crypto. And uh, just I will get into that topic a little bit later in this uh, this exploration of. Bran, uh, the person that I'll be bringing on in a few minutes, but I just wanted to frame that context a little bit and say that you know this is streaming out into two different types of platforms or two uh, profiles. Funding Gym has to do mostly with startup uh, entrepreneurism, entrepreneurism. You know, it's a catchphrase basically, which people that have a dream about starting a business and they just feel like that on ramp or that uh, you know overcoming that uh, inertia is too much for them. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that a bit today when we speak with Bran, uh, this journey. Uh, some people know some of my own background. There's videos about it that I've published recently. And uh, I just think that it's really important that we highlight the people that are at different points in their life. Uh, when they're a youth, uh, they basically just emulate their parents, maybe the people around them, their community, 
Uh, it's more of a nurture nature thing. So I think of the nurture side of things as far as the frame and the mindset that we're kind of um, start out in this world with. Sometimes that just continues for the whole arc and that, that uh, journey is pretty stagnant and stays the same. Sometimes people see a catalyst, they find something, uh, either the stresses of their local environment make them say that, hey, I need to change. I need to do something different than everybody else around me. And sometimes they just run into one or two mentors that can lead them in a path that completely alters uh, where they land in life and the, the reach or influence that they may have on others. So I wanted to talk about that today a little bit, uh, specifically with Bran. Again, Bran represents uh, a community. He's, he's probably has a history inside of other communities in the past, whether it's through school and academics or whether it's through uh, social circles. Uh, so he has an impact on other people. Uh, I just wanted to comment more about that journey and kind of his perspective when we go through this uh, talk today. So with uh, no further delay, let me bring in a brand and see how that's going to turn out for us. Hey, Gary, how how we doing? Good to good to be here. Yeah, it's great to uh, it's great to welcome you on to the show. Uh, I really uh, was looking forward to this. Uh, I know it's kind of last minute. I, I kind of threw it at you. Uh, we talked about it over the past couple of days. Uh, we will be doing a little bit of a trade where I'll do your show, you'll do my show kind of thing. But what I wanted to talk about today, again, because it's mostly about entrepreneurism. I know that 2020 has been stressful on a lot of people. Uh, some have actually either lost their employment job and they start to look for a replacement to that employment job. Often the very first instinct is, I lost my job in this type of business. Let me find the same job in the same in a, in just a different employer in the same genre. So uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that are considering what their future may be. You're at a at a point walking in, you know, into the workforce or into the business uh, communities uh, when it's a challenging time. 2020 has been a challenging time. 2021, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen next. Uh, I think I have different ideas. We can talk about a different time, but I just wanted to kind of explore a little bit of your background, uh, where you started out, you know, who or where, or what kind of culture, um, may have, um, been embedded into you and then transition later in the show to what your thoughts may be in reflection. So, um, yeah, with, with that, you know, if you, if you don't mind sharing, uh, what, just kind of describe your origin a little bit. Okay, um, so I live in Washington State in Seattle area currently, uh, but was born in Federal Way, Washington and grew up around uh, Maple Valley, Covington area. And uh, I've got three older brothers and my parents, when uh, when they were raising us, we uh, we all played like team sports, you know, like football and and uh, some of these sports and um, had a had a pretty good upbringing, I'd say I'm really close with my brothers. The parents always kind of uh, really instilled that in us, the like the the family unit, the the community, like, um, and and the brothers kind of became the best friends. Um, but but uh, but yeah, really close with my older brothers, and uh, the sports kind of helped me be a leader and learn how to communicate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and even still today, yeah, I'm I'm always learning from my brothers on on what they do right and and what they might not do as right uh, to learn from from their experiences. So yeah, so a tight knit family. I think that that's a great foundation. Uh, I think that uh, you know people either have to find it within themselves, or they 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 their earliest mentors, like you say, it might be elder brothers, uh, elder relatives, you know, cousins, uncles, and so forth that you're around all the time. You have a little bit of a a, a safety net, right? Because people want good things for you that are typically in your family. Typically in your family, they want they want you to do better than themselves, and. Uh, yeah, a lot of the shortcut, hey, maybe you don't want to try that because I tried that. And uh, because I tried that and didn't work out for me, maybe I want to try and shield you. So maybe that's what the, the brothers, the older brothers have done for you. I, I hope I'm hopeful that that was the story. And uh, similar with, uh, you know, parents and um, uncles, aunts and so forth. So it's really great that you came from a, um, you know, a, a support system like that. That's really great. Uh, can you give a few examples of maybe the daily routine when you were going through um, maybe middle school or high school? 
what was a routine? Was it that you had a stay at home mom? Was it that you had, uh, you know, you worked in a, in the family business of some sort? Yeah. What was the origin there? Yeah. Let me guess, I guess I should, yeah. Kind of backtrack and elaborate a little bit more. So, so yeah, my mom was for the most part, kind of like stay at home. Uh, my dad, uh, my parents t collectively did real estate, uh, together for like 25 years. And, and my dad was kind of like the, the head honcho, um, of that. And then the mom was kind of like the, um, you know, more secretary side of things. Uh, so, so yeah, she was kind of like the stay at home mom, but then with the three older brothers, uh, two of them, uh, the oldest and then the second youngest, they had their own businesses and, uh, they would do like, like a landscaping business just, uh, around a few mile radius of where we were living. And, um, so I guess that's kind of what makes me excited to be on your show is, is I've had a lot of, a lot of people in my life that, have either had businesses currently or had them in the past that, you know, it's, it's something that I was, was curious about and something that I was attracted to. Uh, my dad would have us doing, have me and my brothers like handing out flyers, like real estate flyers, or my brother would also have us be doing the same thing, but with like landscape flyers. So when you mention kind of like entrepreneur and stuff like that, and, and we were talking uh, a little bit before that um, I've always always kind of wanted to do something um, that's like working for yourself or like entrepreneurship related, but was always kind of just like watching the videos. Like when you mentioned one of your friends uh, knows, uh, or at least he's taken a couple photos with Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, that's a guy that I used to watch all the time. And then, uh, but, but now I'm kind of slowly starting to realize like, dude, you, you can't just watch 24 seven. You need to actually, you know, get off your butt and, and put some of this stuff into action. So, so that's kind of the next phase of my, my life uh, being 24 years old that I, that I really want to get into is, is, you know, maybe working for the self or, or finding some sort of thing that I can do. That's uh, you know, entrepreneurship related maybe. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's a, a, the message even comes from these people like Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins or motivational speaker X, Y, Z. Uh, all of, of YouTube, I mean, so much of YouTube is people that are one, they are getting views and clicks, so they're getting compensated, right? Uh, and if you see that there are 100,000 views on a particular video on how to start a business or something, um, how many of those actually commit, actually commit to doing something? It, it does become infotainment uh, to, to a great degree. And it's uh, kind of this entrepreneur uh, fantasy uh, thing. I think that we we actually find motivation either because we are as human beings, we want to move away from pain and we want to move toward pleasure. Right. So if we're in a very stressful environment and there's just no way to uh, make a difference in your future or for yourself or your family, then you find that, you know, like, again, not to be a, too much of a hard, hard luck story, but people raised in ghettos and you know, very challenging economic areas, you find that they're amazing boxers. And because they learned how to fight on the street and then they end up becoming great, amazing boxers uh, in the sport uh, environment. Um, but, you know, again, what options did they necessarily have? Uh, their options might have been gang related or criminal uh, activity or you know, fighting. Right. So fighting ends up becoming a sport that ends up uh, changing economically their life. Uh, but there are examples out there. Just if we look inside of our microcosm of our micro environment, we just don't think that there is. Right. So how relatable do you feel when you're raised with other people that just don't have a lot of resources and they're all pointing toward the same thing? You know, be a great fighter, be a gangster, be a be something, a hustler of some sort. Right. Um, and I think it's the message should be that, you know, 100,000 people might see some bit of content, but only, you know, a few percent at the most are actually going to take action. And the take action part is falling down. Uh, honestly, I mean, you, you learn so much from falling down. You, you, your next step is less likely to stumble. Your next step is more likely to get you further down that road. So it's great to have all the content. I've certainly absorbed hundreds, if not thousands of hours of YouTube content about entrepreneurism. But I think that that's a great comment you made. Uh, about, you know, just take action. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk isn't going to make you rich. Uh, you are going to make you rich. Um, yeah. Big point. No, that makes sense, man. And yeah, the other thing that I agree with too, that uh, other people have mentioned as well 
is is yeah falling falling on your face kind of like as quickly as you can because because that is how how you learn and i'd rather yeah i'd rather learn a lesson uh, sooner than later when it comes to those types of things uh, especially when you're when you're putting yourself out there so uh, i definitely agree with that and and i've always been willing to you know to to be wrong or to to learn from other people's as much as possible but but yeah now it's definitely time to you know qu quit sitting on the couch and watching it but but actually uh, take that good advice and use it uh, for implementation Great. So I want to take a little moment here. So we are streaming out. It's on nine different platforms or eight or something different platforms. You do see the links across the bottom of our uh, uh, commentary inside of our windows here. Uh, I am on Funding Gym. So if basically Funding Gym is entrepreneurism, startup capital, basically people that want to pivot and convert it out of their employment life and they feel like they don't have resources, but they, they will be able to apply those resources and effectively if they just had them, right? You can't build a house if you don't have tools. So basically the tools side of business, I know quite a bit about and I have different resources can help people. Uh, that has to do with taxation, has to do with setup of your entity as it should be, uh, has to do with getting capital for your patent, your idea, your topic uh, that you wanna invest your own time, your sweat into. Uh, developing so you can reach out on those platforms and that's why you see funding gym across the bottom it's also streaming out as far as me on uh, gifting you hex which is again i'm i'm super supportive of the hex movement i think of it more than just a crypto i think of it more of a movement um and so uh, i'm streaming out on those platforms as well so if you're watching then hit the like hit the support hit the smash whatever all of the buttons and please understand that during our conversations like this, I'm trying to focus on the guest. So I do see a lot of different comments and I will bring them up in a little bit uh, toward the end of this, uh, this chat. I really appreciate you guys uh, making commentary and talking amongst yourselves. It helps the algorithm. It helps to get other people to see this kind of content and make it possible for them to make an impact on the world. Uh, same sort of thing with Ballet Brand. You can see that he has different links across the bottom. Uh, there's Telegram, which is the little airplane, DLive, Twitch, uh, Twitter, and YouTube. And he broadcasts pretty regularly. I mean, he puts his content out there. He's, he's a new broadcaster in the space to a degree. But I want to highlight again, uh, recently he's gotten a microphone and he's bringing on all kinds of guests. And he's just been super supportive of the community that he believes in as well. But uh, let's go back a little bit to the, uh, the topic of origin. Let's go back to your uh, you know, transition out of high school. You, know, you said that you were 24, so that was about you know, six or so years ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, where I grew up in Texas, you are kind of culturally compelled as a young man to be independent, uh, live on your own, either be in school and support yourself through that school uh, or go into the military or you know, become a farmer supporting the, the family business of some sort. That's where I grew up. And so 18 would have been a very transition time for me. Uh, some people in different cultures, they tend to culturally just uh, stay closer to home, stay closer to um, uh, support systems of their families uh, instead of being as independent. Can you comment about like your transition, you know, 18, uh, moving into the, you know, the quote unquote real world or adulting or that kind of thing. Can you comment about that path for you? Sure. Yeah. So after high school, um, in, in high school, I was doing like running start, uh, wasn't necessarily for the, the junior and senior year of high school. Was, I kind of wanted to get out of the high school life and kind of do the, the running start college program. Um, so when, yeah, when you kind of talk about, uh, the after high school things and whatnot, I, uh, I was living with my three older brothers. We we had all moved out into a house in uh, in Black Diamond, and then I was just working a, a job at the time at a uh, at just a uh, Taco Del Mar, just just making some some burritos and whatnot at the time. While I was also finishing up and still doing some uh, some running start. Um, actually, it wasn't running start at the time. It was still still uh, still college education, but just post high school. So. So yeah, uh, I guess I was living with my brothers and kind of still pursuing some of the education um, at Green River and trying to, you know, get a business degree or some sort of degree that would uh, kind of push me towards the, 
area that I was wanting to go to. So uh, let's move forward to uh, more recent events, more recent events for you. I, I think I've maybe, I remember in Telegram chats and things like that. Can you talk about when you first either discovered Hex or were inside of the Hex Telegrams or your first time you Twittered about it? Because that would have been when you would have come on my radar. What time frame would you have, uh, would that have been for you? So my guess would be like January or February, something like that. Uh, Cause I've, I've been in Hex since, since day one. And I've been a follower of, of Richard Hart since, since, uh, since about April, 2017. And I always really liked his, you know, his persona, what he talked about. I could always, you know, sense his authenticity that, he was being legit and not, you know, fraudster like some of the other people at the time. But um, about about February, I believe, was kind of when I started. I'd always kind of been on crypto Twitter, but I didn't really realize how big like the Telegram group was, how big that had gotten until I think like a couple months after launch. OK, so crypto Twitter, Twitter, can you or Twitter, crypto Twitter. Uh -huh. Can you comment about that? I, I hear that phrase. I know what it means now. I used to hear it before, but I don't really know what that meant. Is it just people that are commenting about crypto? It's not like a certain subset and it is Twitter platform. It, exactly. Yeah, just exactly. That's exactly what it is, is yeah, it's just Twitter, but I guess the, the cryptocurrency section of Twitter. And when, uh, how I actually found out about that in 2017 was um, I had bought a little bit of Bitcoin early 2017 and then uh, a coworker that I was working with at CenturyLink at the time, he had owned a uh, like a gold and silver shop, and he was telling me about like platinum and silver and whatnot. So I was kind of getting into the the heavy metals scene for a little bit, and then since since I've always been using the internet and things like that, um, one time when I was on Reddit on like a silver market something like that, and Reddit they had mentioned, uh, oh, this is the digital silver and Bitcoin's the digital gold, and so. Someone had alluded to uh, Twitter being being one of the platforms that a lot of these cryptocurrency people were like congregating to. So at the time, whether it was Bitcoin or, you know, an altcoin at the time as well, I had kind of like followed a lot of the like, you know, influential people and the, the people in the space. And and from there, it kind of just, uh, you know, found Richard Hart and found some of these other people. And uh, it's it's a, a big space in a small small community i guess if that makes sense that's cool yeah i'm, I'm going to comment uh, for just one moment about uh, some of these people that are commenting again they're on different platforms so it's great to see you hey ryan good to see you ryan lopez travel uh, if you pay attention to his youtube channel he's going all through south america it's a great channel so if you look up uh, on youtube and you see the comment section you should be able to follow to his own channel so if you're in the comment section and you see ryan lopez travel Excellent content, uh, great perspective. Uh, same sort of thing with David. It's good to see you here, David. David Morales, uh, you know, having a date apparently. So you know, I hate to interrupt uh, relationships, but uh, you know, glad that you're here for a few moments. Same thing with Silver the Antidote. Uh, if you look uh, inside, if it's at least on YouTube, I know he's on different platforms too, like Twitter and things like this. But on YouTube, if you look inside of the comment section, as you watch this some date in the future, you should be able to find his channel. So if you click on his comment, you see Silver the Antidote, uh, and you click on his comment, it should take you to his YouTube channel. And he is an amazing an analyst. Uh, he's very data-driven, uh, spreadsheets and things like that, talking about the Hex, uh, eco, uh, the movements and transactions within Hex. So that's really his uh, expertise. Uh, same sort of thing with others uh, in the room. If I didn't comment on it now, I will in a little bit. Uh, so make a comment. Uh, leave a note, something like that, and uh, I'll address it very soon. So again, thanks for uh, being here talking about uh, crypto Twitter and explaining a little bit about that origin. I heard about it. I don't really know about it, but actually I uh, had heard so many things about Twitter before ever getting on Twitter that I did not want to be on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I had heard, one, I just thought of it as noise, um, you know, ego, uh, people that can, you know, be behind a keyboard and completely anonymous and just throw, you know, 
oil, b boiling oil on other people. I thought of it mm -hmm. as very caustic and psychologically not that good. So I didn't really want to be on the Twitter platform uh, for quite a long time. I really only did it recently. And you have to have some, in my opinion, you have to have some, uh, you know, some, some toughness to, uh, you know, random thrown comments uh, inside of Twitter. It doesn't matter if it's crypto or not, but crypto Twitter does bring out that in a lot of people. So can you, your personality to me, your demeanor to me is uh, one of open-mindedness and it is one of curiosity. And, you know, at least as far as the read for, you know, interacting with you in, in the past, uh, I wonder how you go through things like crypto Twitter or anonymous, uh, you know, contact, you know, Telegram is another platform where people can be uh, very extremely helpful and they can be, you know, they, they really can uh, bring utility to your life. They really can. You can learn so much, uh, but also to some degree, there's uh, danger inside of uh, the, the free advice that you get from, from some people. Can you comment about how you navigate that? Yeah, for sure. And uh, I'll definitely comment that. Um, I kind of share ideals similar to, like, I know you've mentioned a lot that, like, one of the things that you appreciate about the the Hex community is a lot of us, like 99% of us showing our face and things like this. And the thing that I've learned, I've had a, com I'm 24, but had a computer in my room since, since third grade. Uh, the thing that I've learned, and I was on like MySpace early and Facebook even before my brother's friends were getting in, but uh, as far as like navigating and whatnot, it's definitely one of those things where the the Pareto's shows principle, that 80-20 rule, definitely exists in my opinion, where um, a lot of a lot of the stuff you see is just kind of like banter or people trying to like make their make their uh, point heard, but then in a certain sub markets or just within different threads, you can usually find, you know, little flakes of gold here and there. And uh, I guess how I've kind of browse it and whatnot are really just depending on, on the subject matter that I'm, that I'm looking into. Like if it's hex related, okay, let me try and find, you know, influential people in the community that are doing things that are saying things when it comes to other communities and other markets, I try to do the same thing as well. And I try to, if I don't know about something, I try to just keep like a pretty open mind until you find things that kind of like hone, hone your opinion or uh, change it. But, but I try to go with an open mind. And when it comes to like the trolls and like the negativity, yeah, there's, there's, there's an endless amount of cancer on the internet of, of people that are that are not happy with life and and they're commenting under aliases, you know, bad things. And um, even people in the community have had that happen to themselves. But one of the things that I've learned is, is, uh, yeah, man, if you're if you're out there showing your face and someone else is not and they're pointing fingers, then in reality they're just projecting uh, a lot of their insecurities and whatnot at you. So like, what's the credibility of of the th of the threat or of the argument? Like one of them. An example is like someone showing their face actually has credibility. And the other one is just some troll with no face. That's like slandering. That's the way I've always kind of seen it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it is a different environment uh, altogether. And again, when you have that rapport, you meet someone in person, you know, or even in the internet and it is one of these kinds of interview situations or commentary, you know, I just, there's a soundness to it, right? To the comments, there's a soundness to that backstory. We end up looking at things like LinkedIn and we say, oh yeah, this person has this rank or this title or this position inside of a company and that influences us. Or uh, you look at celebrity and you say, oh, you know, I like their music video. I like their uh, movie direction. I love them as an actor, uh, that sort of thing, right? And that influences us. But uh, because we're kind of wired for that person to person uh, body language and micro expression. We're, we're wired for that, you know, like anthropologically. Um, and so to a degree, like, you know, the, the Twitter thing, I just don't really participate that much. Honestly, I try to throw support. I'm inside of different communities and things like that, but I try to throw support. Same sort of thing with telephone. I mean, for me personally, for me personally, I get contacted all the time, uh, business contacts, personal contacts or whatever, and they want to have a phone conversation. 
And it's funny how they, a lot of times they'll say things like, well, I prefer a phone conversation because I'm old school, because I'm used to a phone conversation. I'm not used to texting. I'm not used to, uh, you know, uh, some other kind of medium uh, that's, that's, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if you really think about it, old school is like face to face, talk to people. <laughs> like, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> like your old school version is like only like 80 years old. I mean, like before that, all of humanity, you read people. <laughs> Very true, man. No, that's, that's one of the cool things about the modern technology that we have. Like, um, yeah, it's just advanced to such a point where, where we can do a, a stream and, and be communicating back and forth. And, and that's what really gives the, the, some, some of the people in the community more credibility than, than others. And when you mention a whole bunch of people, you know, asking for your time at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of humans in general just don't value their time. Uh, which is why they're kind of screwing off um, doing these things. But, but yeah, that's definitely one of the things that I've learned is, you know, you gotta, you gotta at least be willing to put yourself out there and, and uh, put your name out there if you want people to take you seriously. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's segue a little bit. So you said that you learned about uh, Hex before it launched and that was in December of 19. Uh, you said that also you had kind of been interested, maybe participate a little bit in the gold and silver communities, similar with me. Uh, mine was probably about 10, maybe 12 years ago. I became a, a sound money gold kind of promoting person um, or so gold or silver. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's partly to address what you see, what I saw, maybe you saw too or heard about our economic policy about you know the dangers of fiat, the dangers of you know um, no real accountability in politics. There's not really accountability for the spending of the purse uh, that is your tax money. The money that ends up going to the public coffers. So uh, I liked the sound money money principles. I tried to pursue that policy by taking economic energy out of fiat systems and putting it into um, silver, gold. Uh, physical, locking it up, sequestering it, you know, uh, the same sort of thing when we talk about like carbon, you know, carbon used to be plants and it becomes uh, oil and coal and that's sequestered carbon. That's carbon that's stored. Uh, same sort of thing. It has some energy, has some use, utility to us as humans. So uh, I kind of wanted to do the same sort of thing. I didn't want to participate as much in the digital realm uh, as far as um, uh, unaccountable kind of ledgers. Maybe that's what brought you in to that field. Mm -hmm. And then it sounded like you'd heard about crypto through Reddit or uh, mm -hmm. some kind of posting and transitioned into the ideas that Bitcoin tries to popularize or maxis and, and uh, Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum. So can you walk through that crypto journey for you, you know, basically sure, yeah. from just metals to what is this other thing? That, that's exactly pretty much kind of how it happened for me as well. I mean, you start learning about money. What is, what is real money? What is the, the current money that we have now that are federal reserve notes and, you know, Oh, money used to be backed by gold standard and, Oh, we got taken off the gold standard. And, and yeah, through a little bit of education post high school, I kind of, kind of realized like, Oh, okay. Like I want to, I want to have something that is, that is more of a store value than something that just gets diluted. And my, uh, my grandparents, I, I mention this a lot when I talk about hex, but my grandparents, they gave myself and, and my three older brothers for, for Christmas and for our birthdays each year, like a 15 year, like savings bond. And so that was kind of the one of, one of the principles that I always knew that like, I always knew that some things held, held their value more than others, like, like physical things, like whether it's, yeah, silver, like precious metals, or some people do like, like, you know, prepper stuff like guns and ammo and things like that. But, but when, when, yeah, when I heard the analogy of like, oh, this is digital silver and it's cryptographically secured and, and you can have possession of it. Like you can just have, whether it's 12 or 24 words memorized, you could be, you know, walking around with, uh, with millions, you know, just within your head and, uh, and you would be the controller of it. So, so kind of when I got into, Litecoin and Bitcoin and things like this at the time, uh, you sudden you suddenly realize like okay there there does need to be something better and and I'm happy that I was following Richard Hart that that was mentioning these problems 
but yeah, that's one of the major, major motivators that kind of got me into it was like the self sovereignty and being in control of your own uh, wealth, whether it's physically and sequestered or whether it's digitally and hidden off, uh, you know, cold storage offline. Um, a lot of those things really attracted me to cryptocurrency. And then also the other thing, it's uh, it's similar to someone else's story that they mentioned where to actually to RG3 story where, where I'd bought like a hundred bucks worth at the time of this digital silver quote unquote equivalent. And then maybe like two or three weeks later when I was browsing the Reddit markets again and, and had heard of it, I was like reminded, oh yeah, I went on to Coinbase and had uh, had bought in some at the time and then go back to it and the amount had like doubled or tripled. And it's like, wait, why why did this go up in value so much? Um, so that kind of really piqued my interest into uh, cryptocurrency in general. And then, and then I really started kind of doing deeper research at the time into... Uh, into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies of, of what makes them more secure than others or what makes them less secure than others. And, and when someone like Richard Hart came out kind of talking about some of the vulnerabilities and whatnot, it, uh, it really, you know, attracted me to what he was talking about at the time. Yeah. I mean, those are great points. You know, the, the idea of crypto, the idea that was, you know, really brought, to public attention with Bitcoin's release, right? So Bitcoin, Bitcoin's obviously getting a lot of press right now. Uh, it, it, it's had a meteoric rise in 2017, really. I mean, it's had meteoric rises over and over. It's just been, it's just the pool of participants has grown, right? The number mm -hmm. of people participating has grown. And so it's gone over this past uh, few months, really, from around nine or ten thousand to about forty thousand dollars per Bitcoin, uh, but of course that's uh, after meteoric rise in two thousand seventeen to twenty thousand, and then a dip, right? A long dip, three-year bear market, really in crypto space. Mm -hmm. So now we start to see these people that have become uh, wealthy again, or newer participants that just maybe they bought a year ago. Uh, I think Bitcoin somewhere in there, maybe a little over a year ago, was around thirty-four hundred dollars. So they've had a ten x or a twelve x uh, if they are in the market and then back out of the market again. So it really depends uh, on those positions. I, I think that Richard Hart's timing of releasing publicly information that he could have just profited from for himself, which is. If you know and if you sense and you're savvy and you're paying attention to charts and you know human psychology and you can basically call a top, okay, fine, call a top because maybe other people will participate in that top. But the break and, and, and amplify your gain, right? So if you're going to broadcast to the world and say, hey, this thing's going up, right? No one's going to really complain about your statement that it's going up. Maybe more people will adopt and participate and you will go up more, right? So you mm -hmm. see this influence game, uh, you do it in everything in marketing, every kind of commercial is basically an influence game, right? But how many times do you see someone come out with a Chevy commercial and talk about, hey, our sales are going to be shit for the next three years. They're going to be terrible. Like yeah. the market's going down. Like this is a bear market. Here we go. Right. right. It, it's, it, this is where it broke. Right. So why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why, if, if Bitcoin is $8,500, would you, as a person, broadcast to the world, it's going down, okay? So there's this idea about, oh, just shorting the market, right? And, and because I'm going to make a profit off of shorting you, basically, and rebuy in later, right? This shorting kind of concept of the uh, truth, really, in the margin markets. Uh, that isn't what happened. I mean, you saw this guy, you saw this guy basically... Uh, with truth, still have an emotional breakthrough. It's like, God damn it. You know, like the principles of Bitcoin, uh, the, the principles of crypto, Bitcoin's not delivering, right? It's a technology, but it's not delivering. And, and he saw back then, I mean, later he explained better about, you know, the, um, the core, the, the culture, the Bitcoin culture, you know, how, how much, are they embracing, you know, adopting second layer or adopting, you know, use case, right? Um, you, what is the tragedy of the commons, the things that he's explained at length over and over for us. So 
I wanted you to, if you were, if you had listened to Richard and you had seen that, or maybe later in your own research about Richard or Hex or something like that, what are your thoughts about someone that basically broadcasts to the world? Hey, Amen. Wrap it up for a few years. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, you, you know, um, in RG 3s speech yesterday in the Hex 2021 uh, conference, one of the things he did talk about was Richard's speech of calling the the twenty thousand dollar top, and and I remember seeing that stream specifically, and I don't think I watched the whole thing, maybe a few hours of it, but I remember kind of you know, getting emotional when he was getting emotional. It's like, okay, this guy has been, you know, he's been very accurate in a lot of the information that he's presented the whole time. He, uh, he clearly, at least from what he says that his success has been, he seems to reflect that. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, I think what, uh, what Richard did to, to your point, he, he was kind of like the, the, the very unpopular person to say like, Hey, party's over, you know, like, Party's over while everyone's still partying and, and wanting it to, to go up. And and that's when I really started kind of following Richard because uh, when when the, the bear market occurred of, of 2018 and, and Richard kept doing his streams, I uh, I had been following before before that 20K top. I had been following a couple of other like crypto influencers at the time. And I just realized they were just bullshitters. You know, they, they just... In my opinion, they, they really didn't know what they were talking about. And they were kind of, uh, they were like almost like m mimicking, I guess they were like copying what other people would say that were successful at the time. But since they were copying it, it wasn't successful then. And then there was a certain cutoff where it's like, okay, these people are just, they're not really knowing what they're talking about. Um, people like Richard from all of the years that I've been following him, including the 20K top, that's when I kind of realized like, oh, okay, I think we are in a bear market and we could see that with the price. So uh, I, I took it to, to heart for the most part. I mean, uh, like I said, at the beginning, I kind of like didn't want to believe him. You know, you, you, you obviously kind of want the price to go up forever, but no kind of healthy market exists like that. So, so it took me like a few months to realize, okay, Richard is right. All of these other people are wrong. Okay, these other people that I was listening to are wrong ditch them, like get them out of here, get this bad information out of here and let's follow the people that, that I uh, find credible. Yeah. It's, and it's interesting. I, I, I wouldn't normally do name dropping, but I am going to say this about Peter Schiff or about some other gold bug pick people is I've never heard them in the decades that they've been broadcasting about the merits of precious metal, especially gold or silver. Uh, so like uh, Mike Maloney, uh, you know, even with uh, Max, Kaiser uh, that was, you know, basically had a program to, uh, you know, break JP Morgan uh, by buying silver and you know, says, Hey, JP Morgan's not good for the world. And uh, you know, buy silver is your, your re way to do it. I've never, ever heard them talk about the, the bear market, the, about the drop, or, you know, uh, they might say things like here's opportunity to buy a dip or, you know, some, com some, some sort of thing. But no one ever actually crushed it and said, hey, the principle is broken. Mm -hmm. And the principle inside of Bitcoin, in my opinion, at this point in my experience, is broken. It's broken to me um, because I know that it, it does change. It is morphing. It's not immutable. It's not locked. It's not private. There's a lot of things about uh, Bitcoin as an example that is great because it's a pioneer and it started and it kicks off and it brings... Uh, economic uh, energy into the whole ecosystem, but is it the best to do? Is it the best delivery of the principles of of crypto? And to me, it's not. Um, to me, it's centralized far more economically and uh, uh, cryptographically as far as the miner pools than anything. Right? Um, then you know, even maybe as much as real estate. And, you know, I don't think that two thousand people own fifty percent of all real estate on the planet. So uh, when I look at it as far as asset classes, uh, yes, do I want it to go up? Yes, I want it to go up because more economic energy, more on ramps, more banks, uh, more participants can convert their fiat or other crypto uh, into potentially hex or things that they believe in that are delivering utility to them. So to, to some degree, uh, I don't really trust the metals market marketers. Uh, mm -hmm. People that do profit from the sale of what they're selling, right? 
uh, it's not that as a whole, but it's just basically I've never heard them say, hey, I'm a big bag holder of gold and uh, this shit's going to go down for about three years. <laughs> like I've yeah, never heard yeah. that. Right. Sure. Uh, and I've met Peter Schiff several times. I mean, he's a Puerto Rico guy. He's very popular uh, in certain markets. He's on television all the time. Uh, he's somebody that constantly is knocking down crypto Bitcoin just because it's a brand name. It's the first one uh, what he will comment about. Um, Pompilo, uh, other people that get on national um, platforms as far as television broadcast, things like that. Uh, similarly, they talk about the principle, but they don't talk about the example of Bitcoin as really delivering on those principles. The technology is antiquated. The technology is spaghetti code. The technology has had two times that it could have catastrophically ruined everybody's life, right? As far mm -hmm. as inflation bugs and things like that. So, uh, you know, when we talk later about Hex specifically, uh, I wanted to see if you went through that journey, if you went through that exploration on what you think of uh, Bitcoin as an example and about Ethereum as an infrastructure for all these other things that launched over the past few years. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, definitely cover that. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I agree kind of with what you're saying and the sometimes the people that are in front of the mainstream and whatnot yeah they're they're talking about the, the things that going the thing that is going up but to your point they're they're not saying the unpopular things like oh you know it's got market cycles and we're actually at the end of a bull market cycle we're going to start a bear market cycle and just kind of like with the internet i mean i remember the this obviously doesn't compare to people that are older than me but remember the monitors that were like this big and and uh, like five megabit internet and, and things like that. And the way that I kind of see it is, yeah, it's like a, it's almost like an infrastructure network and, and Bitcoin is, yeah, just, especially from the code, it's spaghetti code is kind of like a very, very slow network that has had a lot of hiccups in the past with its vulnerabilities. And, and I think one of the things that Richard's mentioned is there, there's never just like one iteration of technology, you know, there's, there's multiple different ones. And, you know, he happened to do the, the programmed uh, trustless interest. But I think things like Ethereum, the virtual machine, I think those were absolutely necessary for things like Hex to be built on top of it. And, and Bitcoin was great. It, it showed the world what could happen. And especially when you look at its, uh, its first message, um, kind of, yeah, kind of talking about the, uh, the switch of, you know, hey, maybe this is a different alternative and whatnot. But, but I think when it comes to the reality of things, Bitcoin nowadays, looking back, is is very old and it's very slow, and and they don't seem to be. The world is changing. The world is evolving. But its developers and kind of where they seem to be going doesn't seem to be evolving with the world. And mm -hmm. so things like Ethereum, you know, I remember back when when Richard was saying like, oh, it's it's this, this, and this, like this problem. But, but now he's updated his worldview and the world has changed where he can say, oh, this is the better competitor uh, in this cryptocurrency market and it's more secure and it's had less attack surface. So I think there's always like a better thing that will come out. But um, with things like Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Hex, I think, uh, you know, Hex is obviously the, the younger one and it's taken a lot of its, just like with myself, like I've got three older brothers, my dad and my mom, you know, I try to take the, the good from their life experiences that they've done and I try to take the bad from it. And I try to learn from all of that before, you know, meddling through life myself. That's a great, that's great comments. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah, when people go through their journey and they see, um, you know, this transition, they say the principles and things like that that we're talking about. Um, when it comes to Richard and the Hex community that's developed, I mean, this is now a group. Uh, 20,000, 30,000, I don't know how many wallets there are, but basically there's 20 or 30,000 inside of uh, Telegram now. Uh, and then, you know, across Twitter and all these other kind of social platforms. And, you know, a lot of these these um, streaming platforms are actually getting dominance inside of uh, the Hex community. Um, it's very, very cool. Um, so I want to do some shout outs again really quickly. Uh, some other participants that are in here that I noticed, of course, um, you know, some are social friends. I appreciate you guys joining in. Some more people that you know know me and such uh, outside of crypto space, but uh, also um, 
the average Joe, let's just bring this up. So the average Joe has heard of Bitcoin and maybe ETH because of the headlines, but the other coin is way beyond the comprehension of most, even when using the CD analogy. Uh, I hope this go around is different due to the YouTube and Twitches and things like that. So when we talk about CDs, you know, uh, I really didn't buy CDs. Uh, I really didn't think that the yield was worth considering a CD. Uh, when you would get, you know, and again, I've been in the, crypt, the, the credit space for a long time, the funding, uh, the real estate space for a long time. And, you know, you can get an ROI, you know, uh, money for your money, money on your money, uh, to me, faster by buying real estate, fixing it up, reselling it on the market, or buying real estate through leverage, you know, forming correctly, building a good credit profile, uh, business or personal buying that real estate to create cash flow. And it's not so much that you have a better house. It's so that you buy a duplex and you live in one half and then you have a, you're doing a, a house hack of sorts because you have someone else paying the mortgage as a renter when you're an owner. So when I looked at things like a CD where you would put, you know, $10,000 and you would get less than 1%, far less than 1%. So that meant, uh, you know, you get a hundred bucks or something, right? So I'm like, yeah, why would anybody do that? Does it make any sense? Why would I take real, if you want to call it real, but locked up money that's not on debt. Uh, and it's basically, it's, it's a credit on your bank account. It says, Oh, you've got $10,000 in your bank account. Okay. It's digital. It's just numbers, right? It's five digits. And then they say, okay, if you will make this unavailable to you, but available to us as a bank, if you make it unavailable to you, we will give you a hundred bucks, you know, because you didn't, you couldn't touch it for six months or a year or two years. Why would I do that? Why would I give you all my bullets and powder? Why would I give yeah. you my guns? Why would I do that? You know, for some kind of yield, it is the thing that you hear about, uh, Richard even commenting about, about picking up pennies in mm -hmm. front of a freight train. You know, you, you will pick up pennies. You will have your, your CD reward for locking up your economic energy. Um, but that's a centralized system that's both government centralized and KYC, all the KYC stuff, right? Not that you're trying to be criminal, but you're, you're just, you, there's so much that's required to even start a bank account that mm -hmm. a third of the United States can't get a bank account. They can't, yeah. they just don't have the documentation to do so. So there's all kinds of reasons that I just didn't look at the CD market. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I, when I heard about Hex particular, you know, that was what was promoted was uh, blockchain CD. Okay, yeah. what does that mean? Uh, that sounds pretty terrible, right? But I looked at it and it is a hybrid in that it really depends on the market participants. It depends on the people that are actually involved and either they hold liquid hex or they stake that liquid hex to make it unavailable to themselves. And they are awarded with the inflation of the coin, the, the basically the, the code of hex, uh, state uh, is is mathematically proven that if you lock for longer you will be more rewarded and if you uh are taking some of that off of the marketplace because it's locked it's sequestered just like that carbon that goes underground then you are uh been your your the price is going to rise it's just going to rise because of uh, supply demand principles so i wanted to hear if you had ever even heard of a CD in the real world, in the financial world. And when you heard that $7 trillion is locked up in CDs, what does that mean to you as a young person, as someone that, you know, I don't know if you were doing a lot of finance stuff before, but what does a CD mean to you before Hex? What did that mean? Well, I was always interested in finance, like just kind of like the entrepreneurship that, you know, the finance part was always kind of just uh, interesting to, to tag along to as well. Um, but, but I think to your point as well, I mean, yeah, the, the traditional finance and the, the legacy banking system and whatnot with centralized entities and, and with a huge counterparty risk, I think that is a huge turnoff. And to be honest, when Richard said, yeah, two point something trillion between, uh, between the certificate of deposits that really shocked, shocked me. And I was really surprised, but, uh, I agree with the point too that that yeah when you think of CD when I think of CD traditionally 
it just it doesn't make sense at all to to put your money in in that kind of in that kind of I guess investment because you are being diluted by the inflation that's happening and the reward that you are getting not only is from like the centralized counterparty and whatnot but but it doesn't seem to be super reliable that that interest you are getting in the future when the CD is unlocked that that interest is going to be worth anything or even the amount that you put in is going to be worth more than uh, than when you put it in five years ago or three years ago. So I'd always, I'd never met anyone in my life personally that had had done CDs. I had always heard of them when, uh, like I remember when I was setting up my bank account, maybe when I was like 14 or 15, I remember hearing about like, oh, there's the savings account and then there's the, the CD, you know, one year, three year, five year. But I never honestly explored them other than just reading them. But uh, I think things like, I think things like Hex are so unique because they're they're somewhat similar. They're somewhat similar to uh, a CD in in that kind of aspect that you know you're getting interest and, and these other things. But but it's also just completely different in in a multitude of different ways. Where like where uh, yeah, there isn't necessarily some like huge dilution that's happening. And and to your point, like there is a whole bunch of game theory. Like uh, Hex is really cool in the way that yeah, the people that are holding liquid, that's fine. They can hold it liquid, but they're also being kind of like diluted by the people that are staking and that are earning interest uh, for their future hex that they can realize. So, so yeah, the traditional CD was never, never something that I necessarily was like, it's not necessarily like exciting, you know? And uh, Richard didn't, didn't necessarily intend hex to be exciting, but but with some of the game theory and features around it, it's kind of become that way. And it's become most similar, I guess, to the traditional CD, even though it's way different. So I'm gonna comment, uh, thanks for sharing that. That was really useful. Um, so I'm gonna comment a little bit on some of the people that have shared here. Of course, uh, I wanted to highlight this one. This is Kareem Majidio. I probably said it wrong, but uh, I apologize about that, but I just call him Kareem. And uh, again, if you see him in the comment section, of this, it's at least on YouTube, then you can uh, click and maybe he'll have meek and peaceful and calm kind of person. It might be a little bit much for you, just telling you, just sharing with you. But if you're someone that just, you know, you watch things typically on double speed, you basically want to get as much information in your mind as you can, as quickly as you can. Uh, you want people that will cut through uh, a lot of the fuzz and uh, blur of the crypto space. I think that Kareem can do a great job. Uh, so definitely pay attention to his Twitter. And uh, if he puts out content in the future, pay attention to what he has to say. It's very useful. Same sort of thing. I'm noticing new people. So uh, Batter Bull, someone that came up uh, recently, and I'll comment about what he said also in a moment. But he talked about how Hex drafts on ETH. Uh, so if Hex is pumping, then Hex is drafting on ETH. I think it's an interesting uh, comment. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't necessarily understand how uh, uh, the hex and ETH pair on Uniswap. So when you're trading hex uh, for ETH or ETH for hex, they are linked. Uh, there's basically a teeter totter kind of automated automated uh, trading system. So uh, you will find that you know as ETH moves, it does drag up hex. And honestly, as hex moves, it has an impact and pulls on ETH. Uh, yeah. Many people don't understand that uh, the gravity of the earth is pulling at the moon and the moon wants to escape. It is going thousands of miles per second. You know, it's, it's flying around the earth and it has gravity of earth holding it in that orbit, right? So the mass of earth is holding the moon from escaping, okay? Makes sense, so yeah. a lot of people can get that and they understand that to a degree. They hear about gravity. They know that it's in their real life, but they hear about gravity. What they don't understand is that the moon has gravity <laughs> and the moon is pulling on the earth. It's just right. smaller. It's just a smaller mass. So this link between the two has this orbit constant, right? And the orbit has gone for you know millions, billions of years. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that about the ETH and the HEX pair, uh, about how inside of the Uniswap and the market making system of uh, automated, no KYC, no government, no, never, no, no, no one but you and code. 
uh, you are interacting with ETH and that interaction of ETH interacts with HEX or vice versa. Uh, you can also yeah. pair out with dollar, um, what they're called, what they would call a dollar stable coin, like a USDC or other tools to basically bring that back into the fiat world of dollars or yen or euro or peso or whatever, right? right. So I just want to get that across that sure. yeah. ETH is pumping. Yes, that's great. So I think that uh, last year uh, in December or so, ETH was around $100. And now ETH is about $1,100 last time I looked. So it's had about an 11x over the past uh, 14 or so months, okay? So if you look at the time frames, you know, again, a little fuzzy, but that's what I remember is X, uh, ETH being around $100 a year and something ago. Right. And it's gone down as far as 72 I've seen in the past. So, mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's had an 11 times your money. That means that if you had put in $1,000, it would be $11,000, right? right? Or of, of economic energy. Or if you put in ten thousand, it'd be you know a house payment, uh, or not house payment, a house, a house, right? So a ten thousand dollar investment in ETH could pay off a mortgage, you know, one hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars. People don't look at the numbers because they don't aren't aware of uh, Hex's performance, but Hex's performance has gone as high as three hundred and fifty times uh, the money that you put in. I think currently it's around two hundred times or something like that mm -hmm. your dollar value. So if you put in a thousand dollars, it'd be Two hundred thousand dollars, whereas right. you put in a thousand dollars of ETH, it'd be eleven thousand dollars, right? So it's a big, big difference in performance, and I wanted to highlight that about Batter Bull. Batter Bull also had said, uh, so Kareem was talking about enjoying the stream. Other people had talked about uh, getting interesting when ETH cracks eleven fourteen hundred, which has been the all time high in the past, right? Yeah, so it had, yeah. had an all time high of two thousand seventeen, where it went that high. Remember that Ethereum, again, not to throw shade on Ethereum, they're a great pair. They're, they have great, great utility and they have 4,000 devs. They have thousands of coins that are utilizing the, the ecosystem. However, uh, it will eventually be as valuable to you as a road. Uh, so you may have a very nice car, but the car can go on lots of roads. Mm -hmm. The best highway, uh, the one with the least potholes or damage or something like that, we can get the highest speed and you know it's been engineered in a way to allow you to drive that lamborghini right it's been engineered as a road to allow you to do that uh ethereum is the road it is the infrastructure it is a substrate okay there are other substrates available but they may be more risky they may be more dirt road and more um you know random boulder to you know damage your vehicle hex is the vehicle Hex mm -hmm. can go on different types of infrastructure. It can go on different types of roads, different blockchains. It has that potential. Uh, it just is performing on Ethereum because Ethereum is the best road in the marketplace. So I wanted to highlight that as well um, as far as your potential. And what, what actually you care about about a road is you're reaching the goal that you choose. So if you want to get from here to New York and you're choosing the best road to get to New York, you'll get there the safest and the best and the speediest and so forth. But what are you actually delivering? You're delivering yourself, your family, the things that you value, uh, your direction in life. You're doing a lot of things to transport yourself to that new spot and you're just using the best infrastructure for it. Can I say so, something? Vehicle. Hmm? Um, can I say something else in regards to the, um, uh, the Ethereum you know, you mentioned it being 72 or like a hundred dollars at the time. Um, yeah, I was, I was buying Ethereum at that time and had sold, sold the Bitcoin after the snapshot, uh, snapshot for Ethereum and then averaged in, but it's, uh, whenever you tell people, I don't, you would probably know more than I would. Cause I've only ever had success necessarily with the crypto, but it always seems that like when the world is going to end, when, you know, when Ethereum's $80 or whatever, that was the opportunity that I was buying at least some of it. Um, those same people that, that are like asking you about like Bitcoin or Ethereum now, those are all the same people that sometimes seem to be like, oh yeah, you were just lucky. And it's like, no, I, I, had, I had prepared. I had seen that this was an opportunity. And those same, same people calling you lucky or me lucky, they're, they're the same people trying to buy at like 40,000, 50,000. And it's like, what? what are you doing? Like, at least go for something that's got a, a better product market fit. Like sure, Ethereum, uh, sure, sure. Bitcoin is number one and, and yeah, it's going to take 
more economic mass for it to to go up and down because it's just got so much more mass behind it. And then Ethereum is the second most and then and then Hex and whatnot too. But a lot of those people that see like any success, they seem to discount the uh, the struggle or they seem to discount the FUD. Like how much FUD have we gone through in Hex and, and still held through and, and still been staked and, and all of these things? Uh, you know, a lot of people think it just comes overnight, but that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, the overnight success, the overnight success, it takes 10 people, you know, 10 years to be a, a musician and uh, be a performer or you know, craft uh, a craftsman of some sort, right? And they say, oh my gosh, you know, Jihuly, this guy that makes all this kind of fancy glass that's expensive as an artist, you know, he's an overnight success. Oh yeah, he's 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 an old guy that started in his 20s, <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> so I just had to say so, something there. <laughs> so, so anyway, so picking up, uh, so he was talking about that, uh, picking up, um, let me go to, there's another one that I wanted to comment about. Again, uh, let me see here. Heath, Ryan, Children of the Gave. Good to see you guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. By Market Cap, Batter Bull. So, yeah, so uh, he was saying something about Batter, Batter was saying a wealth of valuable information, strong business practices, hex communities, lucky. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. And we really appreciate that comment. Uh, and we learned so much. The same sort of thing about uh, with uh, Bran is, you know, his open mindedness has allowed him to uh, move both you know financially toward better places but uh, also I think that the tools that you end up putting in your bag serve you over the course of you know 30 40 50 years of his uh, future so as you go into the future you want people that are learning principles they might go to um, you know a, an excellent school a lot of parents want to choose a neighborhood that has a good school system so that their kids will learn something uh, you know, useful and have fun have positive impact on their lives. So I know a lot of people that spend very expensive to be in a certain zip code and be in a good school zone for their kids, so to speak. Same sort of thing with uh, the economic savings that parents put together or leverage or they finance in order for their kids to go to a college of some sort or a university of some sort. Um, and so that they might have a particular employment position, right? Uh, I only really now these days, I only really think that that has great utility and function when you're in the sciences and specifically, you know, maybe you need to learn higher mathematics, you need to learn chemistries, you need to learn, uh, you know, academia uh, kind of setting information uh, that can serve you to fulfill that role that you're choosing. So if you want to be a cardiologist, if you want to be a uh, a botanist, you want to be someone that, uh, you know, can, can, can use uh, logical reasoning to even be an anthropologist or archaeologist or whatever it may be as a profession, then, okay, sure, great, universities. I think that they deliver great utility. However, I am not very much um, promoting the idea of that being your primary source of information and that being your primary influence. The thing, the, the person that you become is the books that you read, it used to be books, but now there's multimedia kind of takes that over. I mean, again, the type of multimedia that you're taking in, you know, is it the Netflix of the week? Is it a YouTube about people, you know, dropping things off of very tall things and making smash and entertainment kinds of content? Or is it something that can deliver utility and enlightenment uh, about how you perceive the world you're in? So I love that you're part of that community. You're part of that movement. You're on that journey because honestly, you're going to impact my, my retirement, you know, in general, you know, when mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40 years from now, you'll be running the world. And um, I'm really uh, glad that you're taking on those kinds of tools. What do you think that you have learned? Let's say in the past six months, uh, let's say the past year, what do you think that you have learned in the past year that others in your generation and maybe others in other, your, your elder generations should perceive that they should pick up. What is it that you think that they, that you have learned that you've embedded in some way that they should be open to open-minded to, to learn as well. Oh, he exit scammed me. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's going to be so funny. All right. So let me go back to this. I will, when I see him uh, back in the channel, 
<laughs> let's, uh, he's like, whoops. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing about being live streamed. Uh, we will see if he comes back. <laughs> okay, we're back. I was like, I was like, that's so weird. It just started spinning. <laughs> I was just gonna send you a screenshot of what I saw on my screen. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. The timing was like, I put it right in, you know, lobbed it right in there, and then you're like, your face froze. You're like, gone. <laughs> that's funny. I was like, I was waiting the whole time. Sometimes it just takes a couple of seconds for it to go back. So, um, so right, right before it did cut off, you said. What was the question? What have I? Well, the question, the, the simple question is, what do you think that you've picked up over the past year that you wish others in your generation and older generations were percepting, were perceiving or, or would would pick up themselves? You know, it doesn't have to be about Hex, the coin. It has to be about like, you know, what do you, you're open minded. And I think that your association with other people has been a great tool for you. And I think that the 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 content that you're ingesting you know, uh, YouTube nature content or whatever. So how, how could you be better frame that than what I just tried to say? It's my um, guess. So I'm not sure if I understand it completely, but I think just people in general that whatever it is that you want in life, whether it's that, you know, you're looking to start a business or be a part of a community or things like that. I think, I think it's obviously important to kind of know what direction you want to head towards. Uh, I mean, you and I have talked about a little bit of, I mean, obviously someone like yourself is way more experienced with the entrepreneurship and, and businesses and things like that. But, but I think for people in general, they should at least have some sort of like direction, at least maybe where, where they want to be going. And, uh, cause otherwise people can kind of get complacent. So I'm not sure if maybe I'm, can, what's, what's the specific question? I, I don't feel like I'm necessarily answering the We'll pass what? on it. Okay. So, uh, so silver, silver saying about uh, backup on backup needed on quick maths. So yeah, that's true. But uh, so we're going to wrap this up a little bit. We're about an hour and ten minutes into into the broadcast. Uh, I know that you're participating a lot in the uh, conference that's been going on this past uh, few days. Today uh, is today the day that Richard will yeah uh, today's be, on, the last day. be on tonight. Yeah. Yeah, so that will be on Maddie's channel. Let's find that link real fast. Let me put that up on screen. Hang on a minute. If I go to, is it YouTube, Maddie? Uh, Maddie All In, yeah, is at least the channel okay, name. Let me find the link so I can I can put it on. Um, I can send it to you. YouTube.com slash Maddie all in okay so let me find that and then let me go to this i'm gonna i should just put the i'm gonna put his his content link just because it's better mm -hmm. for format put it in banner create a new banner make that add the banner in there okay so if you visit uh his channel at least now this is uh whatever this day of the month is i have no idea um I'm retired. <laughs> I don't know what day of the week it is unless someone <laughs> says nice, so. Dude, so uh, if you go to YouTube, Maddie All In, Maddie All In, then there's been a four day conference. This is the fourth day. This is the last day. You will see uh, maybe a dozen or more, maybe two or two, two or three dozen people that share different bits of their own life or what businesses they're in or things like that that have nothing to do with Hex, but then they comment about Hex too. So definitely visit. Uh, on the channel also is um, uh, Richard Hart. Richard Hart's going to be speaking tonight. Let's find uh, his. I should have it already, but I don't. Uh, if you look at his channel and you uh, you either gravitate to his personality or you don't, it doesn't really matter. Listen to the knowledge and the principles, right? So the knowledge and the principles can serve you very, very well. You know, you may not necessarily agree with the delivery mechanism of knowledge you know like oh man I, I learned that from television but it wasn't a book right you know people always talk about the the delivery system you know how uh, you know the book was terrible but the movie was better or vice right. versa right uh the thing is the knowledge is universal right mm -hmm. so when you listen and you pay attention to what richard hart has to say and you listen uh, especially he's been putting content out for a few years. If you look at his older content stuff and stuff that I like to reference a lot, um, then you'll enjoy it. I think you will very much enjoy the principles and the knowledge that you get. So he will be speaking later tonight. 
definitely uh, I'll be participating in that as much as I can uh, because I have learned so much uh, over the past year or uh, two years uh, of paying attention to what Richard has to say. So I'm going to throw that to him. And uh, yeah, again, I thank you so much for joining me in today's broadcast. Uh, it's been useful. I think it's been enlightening for a lot of other people. I look forward to visiting with you again in public on one of these kind of streams. But uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Awesome, man. Thank you for the opportunity. All good. All good. If you uh, enjoyed this content, like, subscribe, definitely look at uh, Ballot Brand or any other person that I referenced. Go through the content section, uh, like, like I said, subscribe, add, because it does help the algorithm. It does help get the message out. Um, you know, you don't realize how much that Silicon Valley is taking in of your participation and feeding it to others, right? We have a, a long road ahead of us. Most of us, if not all of us, are in this thing for 15, 20 years. We're going to be here for a long, long time. So definitely, uh, you know, if you see a content influencer that you gravitate to, you like their content, support them, support them. They are supporting you with the, what they're delivering to others. Uh, same sort of thing is if you don't, if you find someone that's inside and you do gravitate toward Hex uh, and you don't like their content or their method of delivery, support them too, right? Simply hit the like hit the subscribe because the algorithm as a community helps everyone. Uh, thanks again. And I will see you on the other side, probably in a few hours, actually. <laughs> exactly. Thanks. See you then. All right. Later, guys.